Okay, so they want adoption. Correct. They're pushing it. Okay. You know, sometimes people push adoption for financial reasons. And in a lot of cases, uh, people that adopt think that they're going to get adoptions assistance, the, the money, you know, until these kids turn 18. And in a lot of situations, the money's turned off after two or three years. Mm -hmm. So then they've adopted these kids and they're really their kids now and they have to support them without any help from the county. We're going to take one more call, and it's Celise. I'm not sure yes. where you're from. Celise, are you there? Yes, I am. I'm from California, from Northern California. Hi. Awesome. Hi. Do you have a question to ask or a story to tell I us? I do. Um, my story is really long, but I'm just going to go directly to the question. So I wanted to ask Mr. Davis. Um, currently, we are at the end of our road here in NorCal, and they... The Court of Appeal denied our writ of petition for the termination of reunification services. We've been fighting for four and a half years, and our contested hearing is on February 3rd. So we can set it for a contested trial for termination of parental rights. The children are adoptable. They are with my maternal uncle and his wife. Our relationship is not really well. And at this point... We are going to set it for trial. They denied the county bonding study. They denied our private bonding study. My question is, when I spoke to my county, when I spoke to my public defender, um, the person stated that um, she is going to think about whether or not to bring in the witnesses, which is a facilitator who's the supervised facilitator, and the transporter who has seen my children happy and also crying having some attachment issues. So my question is, isn't it um, her job to advocate for me and bring these witnesses in to establish a record so when I do appeal? And my second question is, is that when can I actually file a civil lawsuit against the county? And do I have a right to file a civil um rights lawsuit against them based on the fact that they believe that I'm the non-offending parent and they are using medical medical documentation to basically say that I hurt my daughter, but I never admitted to that and there were no, never no criminal charges. So it's basically they want me to confess to something I didn't do in order for them to give me back my children. And they won't give the children back to my husband because they state that he's in denial because he didn't throw me under the bus, basically. And How he old wasn't are the even children? Home. How old are the children? When they removed my first daughter, she was eight months. And they took the second child after she was born two days, based on the, based on the Welfare Institution Code Subdivision J. Okay. How old are they now? Five, four, and five? Um, no, one is three and one is four. Okay. So who has the children right now? Uh, my maternal uncle and his wife. And you don't get along with them right now? Right now, they, they put a strain. The county has put a strain on our um, relationship. And I don't know if I should ask my attorney for a post-adoption agreement because they're stating they don't want one. Yeah, they they don't have to take it, but even if they did take it, it's not enforceable. So yeah. here's here's what you got to do. First of all, um, try to mend the fences with the aunt and uncle because okay. they don't have to adopt. They can get legal guardianship, and that means in the future you could get the children back. They I don't want could. that. Okay, so if they want adoption. Correct. They're pushing it. Okay. You know, sometimes people push adoption for financial reasons. And in a lot of cases, uh, 
people that adopt think that they're going to get adoptions assistance, the, the money, you know, until these kids turn 18. And in a lot of situations, the money's turned off after two or three years. Mm -hmm. and so then they've adopted these kids, and they're really their kids now, and they have to support them without any help from the county. If you become a, a guardian, you get, you know, you get payment all the way through their 18 years of age. But let's get back to the legal part of this case. Um, so what I would do is I would file a 388 petition, um, and maybe your husband should do as well, uh, and make it a really good 388 and ask your attorney to help you do that. Because if your parental rights are terminated, you can appeal the termination and the um, the 388 if it's denied, right? So, but what I, do I do a 388 on? Um, the fact that there's been different change in circumstances and it's in the best interest of the child. You've just given me some new evidence about how the kids are happy with you. And I, I just assume that the judge has never heard that evidence. So no, that he may... has. Oh, he has. We have, we've had, we have had over 365 supervised visitations with no incident, and mm -hmm. they still haven't enlisted to unsupervised. The judge has already he 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 he's basically in the in the pocket of CPX. All of them are. What was the injury to the child that caused the children to be taken from you? Um, they're accusing us of sh um, abusive head trauma, shaking baby syndrome. Oh, shaking baby. Based on the oh. child abuse um, specialist from Kaiser. So did, at the trial, did you have an expert to testify on your behalf about yes, why? Yes, we had two top dogs, Dr. Stephen Gabayas and Dr. Gulenik, one of the top, the top specialists in SBS, and they basically disregarded their uh, testimonies and said they were flat-out liars. Did and you, uh, did they you, were going to go with their county. Did you appeal this decision? We did. We appealed it in every case. We won our first appeal under the fact that they did a bypass and that they did not give us um, a case Reun that to reunify. Right. And we won mm -hmm. after a year and a half. And then on September 10th is when the judge TRS'd us. And that's when the appeal just came back two weeks ago that... Um, the Court of Appeal did a writ of petition stating that they denied the writ um, in regards to the Joyce case, saying that mm -hmm. there was no merit, that the case was not meritorious. It was not mm -hmm. a mer meritorious case. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly because I'm uh, actually I'm going to school now to become a juvenile dependency attorney. Okay, good, good, good. You know, you're really in a tough space legally right now, tough spot. I mean, it's going to be difficult to stop the termination. You should, you know, file the 388, of course. But the other thing is you have to, you know what you have to prove to stop the termination, right? I have to prove that we, we tried that, uh, Mr. Davis. They denied us our private bonding study. They're trying to say that our our private person that we, that we chose was not mm -hmm. qualified, and she's highly qualified. She's been Did doing you, uh, hold on a second. bonding hold on. study. Hold on a second. When you asked for the bonding study, did you make it a, in a written motion form? Did your attorney do that, or did you do that? And yes no, no, let me tell you why. Because we got okay. Hold on, no, no, you don't have to tell me. Okay, you don't have to tell me why. Let, let me tell you what you have to do. You have to make that motion for a bonding study now and attach the resumes or the CVs, the curriculum vitae's of the person who's going to do the bonding study. Well, we and, did give them the curriculum vitae, and the okay. judge said he even looked it up, and he's like, "What? what is this person going to tell me in four hours after the children have already been in, in the custody of the of the family for four years? They're, they're not going to be able to tell me anything. He's like, that I'm going to deny it. There may, that may be a very good way to um, issue on appeal if your rights are terminated. But I, if I were you, I would try it again in written form. The other thing that I would uh, do is tell you is that you can try to, it's difficult, but you can try to prove the relationship between you and your children uh, such that it would be detrimental to them to terminate your, um, your parental rights. And that's hey. what I told the public defender when I spoke to her the, um, yesterday. I said, it would be detrimental if I don't have the supervised facilitator that's been mm -hmm. hired by CPS to be a witness, because at this point, 
I just can't be my own witness to prove my bond. Well, you're going to have to That's subpoena that person in the court. Hey, Solis, you're going to have to prove that person. I mean, bring that person to court, subpoena them, have them put on the stand. Hey, Solis. Yeah, but she doesn't I, want Solis, to do it. hold on, Solis. My engineer is telling me we have to go. I want to thank you for calling. Thank you for listening. Give us a call in three weeks and an update. This has been The Secret, How to Fight Child Protective Services and When. We'll see you next week on the radio.